Welcome back to the Magnificent Menopause Connection, where we are unlocking secrets to transform with embodied wisdom. I'm your host, Beth Claxton, Dr. Claxton, and today I have with us Julie Lancaster. Hi, everybody. Hi, Beth. <laughs> <laughs> decades, <laughs> with decades of leadership in the United States and beyond, Julie Lancaster has served 100 direct reports and has provided 900 performance evaluations. Now, as the president of Lancaster Leadership, she helps thousands of professionals each be things, workplace culture, strategy, and leadership skills. Julie's coaching clients range from aspiring leaders and CEOs. Although she works with 30 teams each year, she specializes in working with people and teams in transition. Julie holds an MA in education and is a certified as a group coach and has been awarded business uh, win, woman and entrepreneur of the month, adjunct instructor of the year and top coach in Flagstaff, Arizona, the place she calls home. And the place I can, Julie and I have known each other for decades and our lives cross over all the time, like That's they right. do in Flagstaff. Welcome, Julie. Thank you, Beth. I'm so glad to be here, and I'm so excited to get our menopause on. <laughs> <laughs> welcome, welcome. So you work with thousands of women every year, coaching and training people to come see you because they want to change. What are the challenges that you see women facing right now? So many. It's such a good question. And I, um, it's, it's interesting over the last couple of years, right? We've had this pandemic mm -hmm. and things mm -hmm. have changed. I just the other day ha uh, had an event on how managing and motivating is, looks different now in right. 2022 compared to before, because I've heard people say time and time again, like the old things that I used to do, don't now work. What in the world's going on? So I just want to like honor that there is this shift in this change. Mm -hmm. And for some reason, like I work with, with all genders, but I want to say like 70% of my clients who are self-selecting, who come to me are women. And um, so I've been able to kind of do my own research, right? Like as they come to me, what are their interests? What are they wanting to grow and develop in? And it consistently is about presence hmm. like having authentic presence having a leadership presence sometimes we call it an executive presence mm -hmm. and what i see is that it's challenging for women because there's this idea um i don't know if you can relate to this but i can 110 percent relate to this like we have to do it all we have to be hyper productive we've got to like be super women and can you relate to that absolutely <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. And so it's this idea of how do I do it all and not drop anything? And how do I keep smiling through all of it? And gosh, I feel like that is the most exhausting thing to even like think of trying to manage. And so really it's about what we work on and what we talk a lot about is how can I be authentic? How can I grow at the same time? And how can I not try and fit some certain mold that's like I've got to do everything at the beginning when i go to a you know i do um training and coaching and and work with teams and so when i walk into the room when i'm working with a team and i tell them kind of like this is what i'm gonna ask of you from the beginning like this is what i would like from the beginning i ask them can we all drop our pretenses meaning out there at work in the world we're sometimes supposed to be like check your personal life at the door and just have a happy face and i don't know just have all these pretenses and so when i say like but in here we're going to be real is everybody okay with that there's like this collective sigh of like thank you my goodness like right like can we just be real and so what i find women trying to figure out is how do i do the two things how do i be my authentic self without apology but also how do I learn and grow and be agile and flexible and, and, and adapt depending on the needs of the situation, which is not authenticity. Authenticity is like, this is who I am and this is how I show up. But we know 
being great leaders, our job is also to adapt. So like, how can I pivot and how can I do that? That is what I've just been seeing mm-hmm. so frequently. Mm-hmm. And I know that that's a constant journey that I'm on. How do I stay true to myself? What is my true self anyway? What do I want? How do I want to show up? How do I want to be perceived? Is that is that authentic? Like thinking all of those things. Right, right. I remember the, the culture 10, 20 years ago so uh, you can't have your, you can't have your children brought to work to breastfeed them because that's yeah. unprofessional. Right. You can't have your children come to work, period, because that's unprofessional. Right. And now we've been at home with our children 24-7 in the pandemic. And to the thought of not letting them come into the workplace, like yeah. that just doesn't make sense. Yeah. And times are changing, right? It's yeah. amazing it how is. it's like the... I'm seeing a real trend towards accepting of the whole person. Actually, that's a bit Mm -hmm. of what we talked about whenever um, we were talking about managing and motivating in 2022 and and beyond Mm -hmm. is how can you have more depth than breadth in your rapport with the Mm -hmm. people that you work with and Mm -hmm. for people who report to you and all of that? How can you really understand them deeply? How can you both be talking about mental health, how, how your mental health is? in a work environment because we bring our whole selves everywhere and there's a lot of struggle right now. So if we're talking about it, that can be really healthy. You know, oh, I wanted to share this. I recently went to a conference, yeah. which was lovely mm-hmm. to go to a conference because right, like some of those aren't happening as much. It was- a Even two- if you're masked. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I did have a mask on. It, it was a two-spirit LGBTQ um, con- mm. conference and there was a quote I wrote it down and the person said the bravest choice you can make is to be yourself and I thought that is it oh that's so good it even gives me chills to recall it now yeah that's beautiful yeah yeah, yeah. and yeah and you're you're tapped into this culture every day that's your job yeah that's so lovely mm. So you and I have talked about some of your health journey. Like oh, yes. I go into this. Um, and it, it's kind of like an authentic, you know, bringing something authentic to the table. And I think you had breast cancer just over to the lockdown started, you were diagnosed. Yep. And, and I believe, and um, I know you believe in doing real talk. <laughs> And we'll let us, we'll let you tell us about how that's in your business and really your life. Yeah, I'm, I'm so happy to talk about this because I, uh, so first of all, it glitched out a little bit. So I'm going to just repeat that it was, I, um, yeah. I was diagnosed with breast cancer two and a half years ago and now, and now it's all um, free and clear and good. Um, but I am so happy for us to talk about this because I don't typically talk about this in my work arena so much. And so this feels like, like human to human, person to person, like, let's talk about this. So here's what happened for me. So two and a half years ago, I went in for a checkup because I was like, I got a lump. And I also came to you last year because I said I had a lump and they're like, oh, you have dense breast tissue, which I don't know. That feels like a weird thing to be told. Like, okay, whatever. I don't know. This sounds kind of, I don't know. For the non-medical person, like, okay, gross. I don't know, whatever. And then I went back and I was like, that lump that you said was nothing is bigger. So let's check it out. And lo and behold, they're like, oops, sorry. It actually is cancer. And it was a super shakeup for me because so I was 46 at the time and healthy just in general and I went in for this checkup and I got the follow-up call right like we can often remember where we were with certain important things I Absolutely. feel like with with OJ stuff or with mm-hmm. 9-11 or my, when Michael Jackson died I don't know these are certain things that I remember so I remember getting mm-hmm. the call and he said hi this is the doctor oh, I wanted to let you know um, you do have breast cancer. We didn't think you did, but you do. And so you're going to need to, and he started like going on. So you're going to need to find a surgeon of your choice and schedule an appointment. And I was like, hold on, wait a minute, wait a minute. Because I, I am a person who I operate really quickly by nature. I am often trying to slow it down, but that was like on hyperdrive. I was like, wait, 
first of all, I've got cancer. Secondly, surgeon of my choice. I don't <laughs> I don't have like a, I don't know any surgeons. Like how do you pick a surgeon and what's my choice? And when does this happen? And I remember just, it was, it was stunning. And I was on my way to pick up my 11 year old and 15 year old from school because they were both going to have their annual checkup. It was like funny timing. And so I remember being like, I got four minutes until they're in the car. Like, what do I say? And how do I do it? And so I was just in this like shock and awe time. And so, so I did tell them and it was very sweet and loving and authentic. But then I recognized that I had like all of these, there are three that come to mind, three assumptions that I had out there in the world that this thing like really shook up. So first of all, my business was booming right now. I just, I just actually like did a little math. I was like, how long have I been in business for? I feel like some people track that stuff really well. Yeah. <laughs> I don't, I was like, Oh, when did I start? Okay. I think this is true. And so right now I'm like, ah, oh, it's the 10 year anniversary. How fun is that? Right. Yeah. And business, I felt so lucky. It's just been booming. And so at this point, business is booming. And then I get this diagnosis and I had this assumption, I don't know where it came from, that um, people who have cancer don't work. I don't mm. know where I got that. Mm -hmm. And yeah. so then they signed me up for 20 rounds of radiation. And so if nobody's been on this journey, there, what I found out is lots of people have been on this journey, which has mm -hmm. actually been one of the blessings of being able to commune with people. It's an instant connection and love and affinity for each other. But what I was discovering is, so you walk into the cancer center and you go to the radiation prep room and you put on the little gown and then you sit there and you wait and then you take turns going in the zapping booth, right? And being that Flagstaff is a small town, I was shocked at how many people I knew who had come through. And I still remember um, this one day when I got my stuff on and I was like, I just facilitated a program for you yesterday. And oh, it like even moves me to tears kind of now to think about that. It, so the lesson that I got that I um, am often preaching, if you would like, that I'm sharing with clients, with groups, I got to really feel it that you never know what somebody's going through. Right. So how can we give grace? How can we give grace? And how can we give grace? Because seeing that guy in particular to be like just yesterday, you and I had secrets that we weren't telling each other and we were showing up as best we could. And now look at this. And so, oh, so that was a big one. Yeah. Um, another <clears throat> assumption that I had was that vulnerability looks like letting it all hang out, like being honest and open about everything. So that is, I no longer think that that is the case. So following Brene Brown and stuff, I know she says that's not the case, but I deal in the business of like authenticity and being real. And I honestly am in my life, I'm, a, I'm an open book. Like you want to ask me anything, I'll tell you anything. I like talking about those kind of secrets or whatever, as long as they're my own, I don't talk about other people's. Um, but I remember walking into rooms, room after room after room uh, during these 20 sessions, they were spread over four weeks, right? So five radiation appointments a day. I bet you know all about this, right? It was new to me. Um, I don't, I don't actually. Yeah. Okay. So it was, it was tight, right? Five a day at, or, or no, <laughs> five per week. Mm -hmm. And I had uh, client groups that I was going to at least three days per week. And I'd walk into the room and think, okay, I'm going to keep this secret. I'm not going to lay it all out there, but I had to do a lot of thinking about like, would it be helpful to share or would it not be helpful to share? And I thought, I think it won't be helpful to share here because once the moment that I share, I think they'll feel like they need to do caretaking of me mm -hmm. and I'm doing okay. I'm, I'm holding it together. I can still like, I want to facilitate an experience for them. But the last day, I still remember I was at, um, I was at the last day of a, a leadership academy, which we do those, those are either eight or nine days long. And it was the last day and I ran during lunch up to the cancer center and I got to ring the bell, which means you're done with radiation. You made it through, it's emotional, it's big, right? Yeah, and I yeah. came back to the group, I was like, now I should tell. And it felt special to be able to share that with them. 
And I felt a little uncomfortable for a few minutes to be like, but I'm okay. But if anyone has any questions, you're welcome to ask, but okay, now let's get back into the content. And so, um, so that was another thing. And then a the third assumption that I challenged. So I don't know about you, Beth. I think you're, I think we're built a little differently in this way for mm -hmm. which I like bow down to how you operate. I had this assumption that I am built to be busy. Oh. Yeah, you you probably might know that about me, right? Without me even saying you, those words. Yes, you go, go, go. I think of you as an extrovert. Yeah. Like and a hardwired extrovert. So so yes, and, and I am like, right, when we take it the Myers Briggs, it does say mm -hmm. I'm an extrovert and all, but I there's a limit, there's a balance, and busy is like. When I'm working with clients, I often call it the B word, right? And we often think of the B word as being something else. But like, we never say busy as a good thing. We only say that if we're brand new into business and we've started a business and we're like, yay, I'm finally busy. But everyone else is meaning AKA overwhelmed. And so I was able to have that moment, right? To like pause in life to be like, how do I want to show up? Do I want to get to the end of my life and be like, yeah, I was busy. Of course not. That's ridiculous. And so I remember taking a walk with a friend, Kelly McKee, and she said, she, you know, people will, will often ask like, so what is this cancer teaching you or whatever? Sometimes I love that. Sometimes I hated that, mm -hmm. but it was great with Kelly. And she was <laughs> like, you know, I think as you're saying, you really want to slow down and be more present and take a breath. She's like, you want to be the CFO of your life. And I was like, chief financial officer I, I mean I guess so but what and she said no and I don't know I don't know if I can swear here should I not swear it's fine it's fine she said you want to be the the lead person of chill the fuck out and I was like yes I need t-shirts I need because I need that actually tattooed on the inside of my eyelids because I can be intense and go and go and go and it doesn't serve me and it doesn't serve the world when I'm frenetic and so that has honestly been my journey of the thing that I'm trying to remember. I'm not built to be busy. That is not my preferred mode. And I still remember one time I had a coach, his name was Merck, mm -hmm. and she said, I went to her and I was like, well, first of all, I think to be a coach, I always want to have a coach. And I said to her, as a coach, I feel like a hypocrite that sometimes I fall off of my goals. And she like took me by the shoulders, not really, but she kind of took me by the shoulders and shook me to be like, are you crazy? What are you talking about? You're human. And the whole idea is we, we have goals, we're feeling good. And by accident, we stop prioritizing them. We forget about them. And then we recognize one day that like, wait a minute, I'm no longer doing that thing. And I wanted to do that thing. That's the moment where we can be like, oh, I can climb back out of this. And then also my, um, my, the coach that I have now, her name is Andrea. She always is talking about recovery. Mm -hmm. Like, right. It's not about doing something perfect in your life. It's about noticing, paying attention and thinking, ah, is there some way I want to change this? Do it differently. Make amends, whatever it is. It's not about getting it right. And yeah. What, I, what I've been um, noticing is like in the yoga, the Sanskrit term is spanda how like there are times where we can be stretched and like get a whole bunch done, but mm. there has to be that recoil and the rest. And just like summer, winter, the tides coming in, the sun up, the sun down. Yeah. And we work so much better, I do, if we can have that rest. Me too. Yeah. I don't know why I wasn't built that we're all built different ways, right? But I am consistently mm -hmm. like looking forward, what's next, how to uh, biggering more energy. And I, I was asked um, by my really good friend, Kim, she one time said, you like, you like to host events where a bunch of people come over and what, this is pre COVID. And I was like, yeah, I really like yeah. it. And she said, if you had your choice, how would you like to spend the time when the people are over for a couple of hours? She said, cause I noticed you, you're like, really cordial and you go to all the people and you check in and you make sure everyone feels tended to a little bit. And I said, oh, my preference would be to sit with two, maybe three people in the corner the whole time, like really 
chatting and she's got a list a lot of wisdom and she just did they're like huh that's interesting <laughs> for me to be like i am not in congruence with like how i want to show up and so it's i am often consistently like getting those messages to slow down and change things oh even well i have to share this so greg McEwen, i love his writing mm -hmm. essentialism mm -hmm. is one of his books and he talks about like make one decision so you don't have to make a thousand yeah. And I so resonate with that. 13 years ago, I stopped drinking. And by making that one decision, it became so much easier instead of like, I want to drink and I want, I want, I want this and I want this. Should I, shouldn't I? I'm not sure. Like just having the rule made it like a cut and dry and clear for me. And so that rule philosophy has really helped. So for example, like on Tuesdays now, Tuesday afternoons, I don't work. Mm. I'm like at least three hours I'm going to take time off I'll get a massage I'll go for a hike I'll have my doctor's appointments or whatever like that kind of stuff because if not I'm I do lots and lots of productivity I get I, I'm on hyperdrive and oh actually and in the book the prosperous coach Rich Litvin I love mm -hmm. him he talks about who's our ideal client our ideal client is us Right. And so I'm like, oh, I have the lived experience to do what now is part of my brand, which is helping people to live with productivity and joy. I'm the lived experience because because I have to practice it. I, I do drive, drive, drive productivity and I forget if I'm left to my own devices to like incorporate that joy piece, which it feels to me like as I'm talking, I know you are so involved in mindfulness and I'm like, that's what I uh -huh. I'm trying to come back to and you know I, I do it I teach it because like I needed it maybe more than anyone right yeah, yeah. because I'm living what what I need and I'm passionate about it because I can see what it's done for me and um yeah and I and I I, I don't see you as much as hardwired to be busy, I see you as hardwired, passionate about oh, what you're doing. I'm gonna right? take that. I'm gonna like, yeah, that, yeah. I want that to be part of my identity. Cause I can like sit there and I can dig on charts till 10 p.m. and then not be able to sleep because I've been staring at the blue light and I have to consciously decide like yeah. evaluating someone's genetic report is not worth missing a night's sleep because I'm not going to be there for them tomorrow. That is it. Or myself or my kids. Are, yeah, just, yeah, doing like, ooh, hard stop, like you're doing on Tuesdays. Yeah, burnout happens step by step by step. And one day we wake up and we're like, why can't I serve my patients anymore? Why can't mm -hmm. I show up in the world? Oh, because of all those micro mm -hmm. moments of staying mm -hmm. with the blue light. Oh, and listen to this. Yeah. Well, oh, this even gives me chills to talk about it. in four days. Mm -hmm. I'm taking a three week sabbatical to Spain or I'm going to go hike on the Camino de Santiago. Right. In, and anyway, I'm super excited. And it's probably the most courageous thing I've done because to really stop working and get to systems where I can stop working and everything's not going to crash and burn. It feels like it has been a monumental feat. And, and that is also because when I think about what my best self looks like, it is getting outside, it's being in nature, it's all those things. And I forget that if I stop, if I forget to pause, if I don't pause. Wow, yeah. I've never hiked it. I've been there. My advice is get the best socks. Hi, <laughs> that's funny. I did just buy three pair of $22 socks. Good. I was like, what am I doing? But I think it'll be the right thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> right Thank thing. you. Great <laughs> advice. <laughs> okay, so so let's say that I'm one of your clients. Yes. And I would want to develop my leadership presence. What advice could you give me or any tips could you give oh, me? Heck yeah, girl. Here we go. Ready? Okay. Yeah. So to develop your leadership presence. Right. Mm -hmm. So the first mistake that I see people doing is thinking there's like one right way that like, mm -hmm. oh, it looks like this. It's kind of like the old school philosophy is leadership looks like you have to be an extrovert. Now we've like 
thrown that on its head and Susan Cain yeah. teaches us stuff like look at these incredible introverted leaders and I'm so glad that's getting the attention so the first thing I want each person to like think about I want you to think about as my client is your unique brand is special and unique and exactly you and exactly as it should be I, I want to share years years and years ago so now you you know generally know my age right so when I was fresh out of college I worked a summer program in Alaska where we were helping kids to have an outdoor experience and do community service work and stuff like that. And I still remember the director of that program. He said, one day we were having a deep conversation because we had a seven hour drive between Anchorage and the site where we were going. And he said, like, what makes you uniquely you? And I was like, first of all, I've never thought of that. And secondly, my answer was nothing. I still remember telling him, his name was Brad, like nothing. I am run of the mill, same as everybody else, nothing special. And he was like, are you freaking kidding me? Like, like get a grip. You're so wrong. And I still remember it was half my lifetime ago. And it was so good because he's like, first of all, first of all, you're a girl from Pennsylvania who's now made her way to the backwoods of Alaska somehow. Everybody is not doing that. Secondly, you're our outdoor specialist. You're here teaching rock climbing, right? Like that is not what everybody does. And it really was this shake up, this wake up for me to be like, oh, I mean, everybody's not just like me. Everybody's not, doesn't want the same things, isn't built the same. So that's, it's, it's, we are all unique and we can like really lean into that. The other thing is I would ask for you to journal or write about what does my best self look like? Mm -hmm. And I was just recently working with a client on this who was having this, uh, actually it's really well-timed for us to be talking about menopause because she was having what sometimes people call this midlife crisis, but I like to call it midlife questioning. Okay. Yeah. It's a great thing to be questioning. Like, is this how I want to keep living my life? And so I asked her that question, you know, what does your best self look like? What are your actions? What are your behaviors? What are your feelings? And she was like, well, yeah. and she started to go into goals, which is future forward. She was like, well, mm -hmm. I would be exercising more and stuff. And I was like, no, no, stop there. The solution or the answer is not looking forward. It is looking backward. What does your best self look like? What, like get your, in your mind's eye. What, what are you doing when you're showing up and it feels great and you're happy and you're satisfied and you're content or whatever best looks like for you. And I still remember her being like, so it's not about, I need to force myself into a certain kind of way. So that would be some of it. And then also, um, like when I work with teams, sometimes we do mission creation, vision creation, values creation. And when we're creating values for the team, it's the same exact thing. Values are not aspirational. Mm -hmm. Who do we want to become? What do we think is a good idea? It's yeah. what, what do we stand for now? Like if people would walk through our doors, what do they see that we stand for? And how can we make that really clear? And so we know that's how we want to make our decisions. So I think that's for everybody. And if, okay, so that's, that's a, <laughs> it's a mirror, that, that way. that's a closet right back there. And if you open the closet, I have my, um, my answer to that written in there and how I framed it is um, how do I want to show up until 2040? Mm -hmm. which is apparently, I think, when I'll be 65 years old. And that's like, apparently when a lot of people retire. And so I was like, how do I want to show up for the rest of my working years? For whatever that means, all of that can change. And so it's my reminder. Uh -huh. my yeah. and, and it's funny because I looked at it just recently this week. And one of the things on there is I'm remembering to take me time and get outside and enjoy life. Mm -hmm. And it might sound funny that I need to have that written to be like, remember, because if not, I start thinking I want to show up in a different way. And so that's oh, yeah. why, that's um, why this Spain thing feels like, okay, this is the right thing. The right. Thing. Yeah. Yeah. You know, um, talking about best self, I heard someone recently to take the, cause best can be like a judgmental kind of term. Right. I heard someone use favorite. So what is your favorite self? Oh, I love it. Isn't that great? So I've been like throwing that in there and I, it, it's, uh, it seems to me more expansive and flowery 
and um, more joyful. Like when I'm my favorite, like what does that look like? I yeah. love it. And I love that it's that too. It's the, my favorite, my favorite of myself. I get to, mm-hmm. I get to choose. Yeah. Yeah. Beautiful. Yeah. Super fun. Yeah. Tell, can, well, I, I love, I, we could talk for an hour. We could talk it, for it days. <laughs> um, so tell us a little bit about your free gift because it's an amazing thing. I'm so excited to give this. And so, so for all of you, if you're listening, when Beth initially asked, I was like, oh, I could do this or this or this. And I was like, I want to go big because I am such an advocate for um, supporting women. Again, I work with all genders, but I have facilitated women's summits and I've done gender specific things to women because I fit into that landscape well, right? And so, um, so... I have an online course that's called the Women's Leadership Academy. You can even see it right over, oh, it's that thumb. It's like, that's the opposite thumb of what I think, right there, oh, that one. Um, That's the notebook or the journal that goes with it. And it is a course. So the long and short of it is I'm gonna give everybody a free course, which is valued at $279 and people actually usually buy it. And how, how I originally created it was I was recognizing that there were certain topics that women kept coming to me to um, to work on. And so I got to like channel that research into here are the 13 topics that women mm-hmm. come and want help with the most women leaders. And I always use like leaders in quotes, meaning that we are the leaders of our own lives. It's not about you being a manager, director, boss, VP, CEO, whatever. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And so it's that. So it is, you'll get uh, the website is strong, strongwomenleaders.com. And then you'll get a promo code, and you put it in there, and then you get a free course that doesn't expire that um, you can have access to, and it can help you to, to grow your skills and your confidence. And, and there are, so it's videos and it's a, and it's a guidebook. It's like a workbook. So that's what it is, Beth. Mm. That's, such a beautiful gift. Yeah. I'm, I'm jumping on. Everybody jump on and get it. And I want to be fully transparent. This is not my normal background. I'm working in Winslow, Arizona today, and the internet isn't great. That's why this interview has been kind of glitchy. Yeah, see, my internet connection is unstable. So I appreciate everyone's worth. Um, it was worth getting to talk to Julie before she goes to Spain. Yay! Yeah. Well, yeah, I'm so excited good. to be part of this community. And I know um, that as I was thinking about like the bio that I sent to you that I said something like, in between the hot flashes, <laughs> this is what I'm up to. But I am in the world. Oh, because also mm-hmm. when I'm on mm-hmm. the drug tamoxifen, which is an estrogen blocker. So it's like instant hot flashes. And so... Yes. So we're just all in mm-hmm. this together. And I love, I love that you're creating the space. I love that everybody's here to talk about the real stuff. That's what mm-hmm. it is about. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Thank you so much, Julie. My pleasure. Thanks so much for having me. And yeah, go seize the day. And I'm not going to think about work for a whole three weeks. Yay. <laughs> Take care. You too. Bye. Bye.